and I'm your host today. And I hope, I'm sure you're going to enjoy today. Uh, we're going to be talking about communication. I have a lovely guest on, Kim Taylor, who's been working uh, for over 15 years with um, tra communication training. She's the CEO of the Ultimate Communicator um, Training System oh, and the founder of the Nine Step Ultimate communication training system. And so Kim's been working with many people uh, for many years and very experienced. And she's a wonderful teacher and a wonderful person and communicator. And Kim's sort of, she's um, given um, presentations to people like at the James Cook University, um, Rotary International, Kmart, Big W, and who else, Kim? Um, <laughs> Toastmasters, oh, of course, yes. many people, plus working <laughs> with many groups and one-on-one -on -one people. And I can attest to Kim's um, skill and uh, her training is wonderful. So today we're going to be talking about her work and also a new aspect to her work, which is communication archetypes, which is really fascinating and how it can help you I mean, apart from Kim's other work, but how this can help you in your life, whether you whether it's just in your everyday life, but it's certainly in business or what you want to get out into the world. So I'm sure you're going to find this interesting. So um, just before I welcome Kim, I've got to do a bit of housekeeping. So um, certainly here on Angel Heart Radio, um, we're here to um, not replace any... Um, medical or legal advice at all certainly we're here to encourage you to uh, use your own wisdom and insight and knowledge and find your own way okay that's out of the way so now welcome Kim so great that you're here today oh thanks to Beth it's been a, it's a real pleasure to be here I've been looking forward to this and uh, you're such a lovely um, I just knew that you would make it very warm and welcoming and because that's who you are. So yeah, it's a pleasure to thank you. Pleasure to that. <laughs> I mean, you've, this is such a big subject and you've been, as I say, you've been working for over 15 years in doing this and your training system of helping people with public speaking or just um, how to communicate better, to understand themselves, how to communicate, what that's all about. So if you want to um, just talk a a little bit of your background, even just for a beginning, what led you into this to begin with and what, why you wanted to help people? Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one because, and I, and I don't know if you relate to it, but I, you know, all through my life, most of my life, what I've always done is I've always been a support role to, to others, which has been fantastic. I've always loved it. And, and, but it was, Back in, gosh, it's going now, back to 2013, that I started this business. But prior to that, a few years before, I started getting the feeling that it was time to do something for myself. It was time to, we, we had the nursery, the wholesale nursery, Chris, my husband and I, and I loved, you know, working together. But it was just interesting. It was just time to start doing something for myself. And Communication has always been a fascination for me, communication, public speaking, tremendous fear around public speaking. Yes. And, and I think that's what that was what drew me as well. It's like, you know, the, there must be a way to overcome these fears of public speaking. And, uh, and, and, and then there was the coaching aspect of that, being able to help others. So I, I kicked off at Toastmasters and went, yeah, that, you know, I really like this. And actually there's something more. So that was, that was how it unfolded. And, and mm -hmm. I decided... You know, 2014 was going to be the year to to really do something of my own and uh, so that's that's essentially how it started off yeah that's good and so what was the first step that you took to, um, you know propelled you well that you knew but what was your first action in doing that I guess yeah to, um, where did you start that, that's a, a really good question because I, I do I do often get asked that and it's like one of the first things that I did was I found myself a business mentor and 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 a coach to help me get clear on my values and mm -hmm. and 
what's what would be really aligned for what I was doing for what I wanted to do and and that's why it became really clear with the communication there were some other avenues as well there was um, real estate and there was also um, because we were trying for um, to have children I was I, and we couldn't but I was thinking I could take a, a, a coaching path of helping you know couples in their relationships so with my mentor I was able to identify crystal clear clarity that actually communication I loved the other areas but crystal clear clarity that communication and public speaking that was the area that I wanted to pursue so mm -hmm. and and then I you know from there worked out well what was my system you know what what is it what makes me different from others that are teaching you know this and training this type of work and uh, and that was where the nine steps to ultimate communicator came about and uh, because it's a unique system that really helps people to not only understand their public speaking side and, and how to build their you know, confidence around it, but also anything to do with communication, whether it's communicating with their teams, communicating with their uh, clients, all of that kind of thing. So that was, that was how it started off, yeah. Yes, because there's so much involved in speaking, in public speaking or, you know, within yourself there's so many processes and so many things to understand about yourself and other people how people listen and um, how they react uh, all sorts of things so it's it's such an in-depth um, process really and and you you go in quite deeply to so many aspects so people are very clear about what it is and it certainly makes you think far more differently <laughs> about things and about when you communicate so it's a fascinating process. I've been lucky enough to um, to go through this with Kim and just learn. Oh. You, know, you never stop learning. I mean, there's so much. And, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's still very nerve wracking, I think. But for most people, there's that nervousness to get up and speak. Like, you know, people would rather die sometimes than public speak. That's the, so funny. Yeah, that's what the stats say, isn't Hello. it? it is. <laughs> they sound right. I mean, I go, go figure. If, if you have died, you can't do anything anyway. <laughs> so that's <it's> right. Of... <laughs> I think I would go to public speaking myself. But yeah, yeah. It, it is fascinating. It, it brings up so many fears inside you. And it, it's a process. And in your process, you it's like learning to accept yourself and be okay with whatever. And that confidence grows all the time. And, and this is a part of, um, you know, why people, I mean, there's many reasons people would come and see you, but just even on a personal development um, level on that, even if you don't go and speak, I guess this is still worth, it's still very much a worthwhile process. Would you say from people you've um, taught over the years, you could see that? Yeah, I, I do. I agree with you because it's, you know, a, a lot of a lot of clients that I've worked with, initially they'll come come and work with me and, and they'll say, oh, just no, I just want the skills. I just want the, you know, how do I get my message out? How do I get clear on that? How do I deliver it? I, I want to build my confidence. And then and then we go, okay, so let's start with where you're at now. And and sometimes there's some real um, real challenges and blocks that can stop us from doing it. But once those, yes. those are cleared, and this is why I love the, uh, I, I have a background in neuro-linguistic programming and, and I'll do deep processes with clients because that's actually where it starts. Because if we, if we pile on the skills of how to do something and we haven't actually dealt with what's going on and I think you would relate to this with the beautiful work that you do to Beth is if we haven't dealt with that inner stuff mm. then you know it's always going to be there and and it just causes more confusion by piling on more skills so yes. you know, <laughs> yeah it, that's very true it, it is I mean you need to get to that core level to sort out that and then you can build the steps on that. And that's what you do. You do build those steps as you go through your course as well, which are, is, you know, and for anything to stick, to anchor in to someone, mm. taking those steps is such an important thing. You just can't rush this type of thing, really, I don't think. You, you do can't. say in your experience. <laughs> 
I, I would agree. And and sometimes, you know, when I've with when I've worked with someone, they've actually told me that it's past life. That's it's mm. from a past life that that is blocking. They they know that intuitively. And or they say it was when they were five or when they were in the womb. So it's it's that, you know, we, we know, we know in deep within ourselves uh, where, you know, where where it's coming from. And then just mm. to have someone to walk beside us to, to help them, you know, to clear it because we do it ourselves. And then it just opens the, the doorway yeah. for whatever you want to do. And, you know, yes. and, and communication just comes into so much, so many, you know, every area of our life, whether it's our family, our partners, our um, even our pets. <laughs> talking to Yes, our pets. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And then, <laughs> I agree totally. <laughs> I always talk to our dog Bella. Yes. Now, really. Yeah, she's she's well, they do understand, and it's the energy that you put with that. They might not understand yes. the words, but it's what goes with it. And that's the same with yes. human. Yes, exactly. And it's that real connection. I mean, you know, they've they've proven that with we all as human beings, we need that social connection. It's actually proven, you know, um, some people might think that they you know they don't need it. Well, Mm. an actual fact when you get social connections so that's where you know communication comes into everything and you know so it's personal as well as our professional lives whether it's our career and yes. talking to our colleagues or our teams or uh, getting up on the stage it mm. comes into every aspect around knowing what that is for you yes mm. it's just you know speaking up for yourself in whatever situation even whether you yeah, one on one. Speaking or... up, absolutely. Speaking up's mm. a big one. It's a big one. Yes. And it's it's interesting because and and um I, I think you might be going to touch on this, but I just felt to say it now is that you know this is why over 2020 that I my whole business had a whole shift in gears and um, because it used to be called Ultimate Speaker and now it's Ultimate Communicator. And, and the reason for that is that I realized, you know, with the work I was doing, that it was so much more than just public speaking. And you know, it was it was actually I, I was realizing that there were these patterns of power and and these these themes of, of styles in communication that were coming through just with the people that I've worked with. Mm. And uh, and and from that, I actually identified eight ultimate communication archetypes is what I've called them and uh, to be able to help people just to really uh, nail who they are you know to really get to know who they are in their natural authenticity their natural you know and do that with that integrity so very yeah, yeah. and you know again I've been very fortunate to have been a part of that process and for me it was quite hmm enlightening enlightening is the word but it, it was um something changed in me when I understood my archetypes okay. it anchored in something so wonderful about this is me and I sort of you sort of know but when you see it um put in front of you you go this is me and it <laughs> feels yeah. so good and um you go yes and it makes you feel stronger in your own inner knowing of how you go about things and how probably is a better way or not so good and understanding the positives and you know the 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 weaker side you could say the positive strengths and weaknesses of you and how how to work with them in a better way so yes it, it's a an amazing process and uh very enlightening I found. Yeah, wonderful yeah, so that's right yeah you're you amazing yeah, <laughs> Thank you. you're amazing with doing it, and and it was. I think some of the some of the words you used is identifying what your top uh, communication archetypes were. It was like uh, you're talking. You mentioned. I think you mentioned the word. It was like it built that confidence within you, and and it was that feeling of like inner knowing. So it was enlightening, but it was that yeah. inner knowing, like oh yeah, that's it. That makes sense, and and trusting that, and yes. uh, and that's. And I think that's that's the key because um, the number of clients that come to me and they'll say, "Can I have you know?" I, and I say, "So what you know? What are you looking for? I want to be clearer in my message. I want to be real in who I am." 
you know, yeah. often they'll, there's, you know, lots of amazing specialists out there in their field. And, and what people don't realize is that the way to communicate your message, whether it be Facebook Lives or LinkedIn or um, being on the stage and isn't the same for everyone. It's not a one mm. box fits all. And, and, you know, some specialists in the field might say, you know, oh, it's really, you know, you've got to get out there and do a Facebook Live every day. Well, actually, no, because that may not suit your style in communication, your communication style. So it's, it's fascinating to me because they'll come, my clients will come to me and they'll say, I've been told I should be doing this. I said, well, let's identify what your top communication archetypes are and then I'll be able to guide you and you'll also know it'll make sense to you as to whether you're meant to be on the big stage or whether you're probably, you know, best to be behind the scenes more, but still getting your message out, but doing it differently. And, yes. uh, and so it's, it's a fascinating journey. It really is. And that's sort of and these days where it's all like, you know, we've got to be out there, you know, have everything on social media, blah, 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 push, yeah. push, push. There's a yeah. relief in that, <laughs> knowing that this, I don't have to do that. I don't have to be that way. That is not me. And I'm sure yeah. everyone listening, um, and I'm sorry, people, I thought I had the restream chat up and it's not come up, so I can't see any messages. So um, do apologize. <laughs> and if you leave some comments, I'll we'll certainly answer you after the show, definitely. Um, yeah, there's such a relief in that. And I'm sure for um, other people you've done it with, they may have said the same thing and anyone who thought about doing it with you, it, it's just this, ah, yeah, that, yes, that is so yeah. good uh, to know that I don't have to be that way. I don't, I have to be me in that way exactly. yeah. Yeah. it just takes the pressure off it just takes the you know it's like it I can just be and do without the pressure of like I should be I should we should all over ourselves don't we that's what they say yes. but it's like you know it's true. Of, yeah <laughs> I should be this I should be that well yes. actually no yeah that, no. No, that's exactly right and uh, so what what did you come out as you you your top archetype oh that's right you're a visionary I'm I a visionary Yes, yes. You're visionary. A visionary. and then there was the inspirer, creator, and campaigner. I think were the four top four. Yes, the, the top four yeah. because they were very close, and I think we needed to do a little process to to for you to to recognize. Okay, yes, you to resonate with which which one it was for you. But you're a visionary, which makes complete sense because you are about let's create the future. You no, know, you're a there's it's like you're a um it's it's like the innovative it's it's un, it's ex, you're exploring the unexplored possibilities with someone and and helping them to oh, see yeah. the future which, which is exactly what you do so it's completely in line with the work you do which I love which was wonderful like you have ideas and I'm sure everyone else has a bit of an idea what they feel like they they are or how they go about it but yes. to actually see it written down and and the words the description was just yes. uh yeah it was wonderful again to go yes I was like, I'm not just imagining things or exactly. you know um not imagining things but yeah it really um uh, confirmed that and that was wonderful yeah, yeah. to know yeah. that yeah and, so and the yeah. thing was oh sorry I interrupt you go no I'm, nothing I'm, to say I'm just so in, oh yes you have <laughs> No, not right now no, I'm listening to you <laughs> it's just it's such a, it's such an exciting thing and this is what I love about working with people is is for them to discover just like you're saying to get that um enlightenment or that insight into who they are and and then to be able to, for them to see oh this is you know to guide them as far as the path because I was just thinking your your second archetype was the inspirer and an inspirer is, is someone like Jacinda Ardern. She's definitely an inspirer. Yeah. So a softer approach, they're about compassion and empathy and fairness. And, and they come from a place of, how can I help you? And, and so your second one being your inspirer is, is driving and motivating your visionary, which is about let's create the future. Now, why I was just, felt to say this is that I was just working with someone this week and she is a visionary as her top archetype 
But her second archetype, her motivating or driving second archetype is Empress. Now, the Empress are about give me the big stage, put me in the spotlight. They shine the light and they enrich other people's lives just by being on the big stage. So they're people like Tony Robbins, who just, you know, they thrive as a, as a, in, in that space. They're thought leaders, what, what they say people do. Whereas an inspirer, just as powerful a leader, just as beautiful and natural a leader, um, an inspirer just takes a softer approach but both very, very beautiful and natural in their leadership style. But the inspirer, like yourself, inspiring your visionary takes maybe a softer approach of one-on-one -on -one with people as opposed to being on the big stage. Doesn't mean to say you can't do it. It's just that the one-on-one -on -one and, and really doing that deep work with someone would be more your preference. Yes. Was for Tony being an empress, the client <laughs> I was working with as an emperor, she's like, put me on the big stage and I'm in my element, <laughs> creating the future as a visionary. So it's just yeah. very different, but owning that style is, is very, it's very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that was the thing is when you own your, you own that and it, the feeling of owning it now is even more empowering. I think for whoever, you know, you do this for and they understand this. I mean, for your own you're a connector you're top what's your top three i'm an inspirer as a top one oh, and okay. yes and then i'm a a visionary and a campaigner ah. so yes so visionary comes up quite a bit i think campaigner i think your campaigner cool. that, was, that was about your fourth one that's right a campaigner is like becoming a conscious advocate for change they're mm. happy to speak up about a cause and make a difference. So yes, mine was the was the inspirer, visionary, and campaigner. Yes, yeah. it's yes, yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. Just for a bit of fun, mm. whether because you're so trained that you can read, you you've probably got a good sense of people. Is there anyone yeah. like um, someone famous? Um, I'll I'll go for. Um, Joe Biden for some reason what would you say he would would you have an idea what he would be yes I do I guess I do I love being put on the spot and, and asked about people <laughs> it's uh, it's so funny uh, this happened at a network event not to digress but this happened at a um a keynote that I was doing for a, a business connect group and uh, and I'd already said like I've got a really good idea of who each of you are and of course the first question back is like okay can you tell us so we went through and we spent quite a bit of time just you know this is you and would you agree and you know went through so to answer your question Joe Biden I would say that he is an inspirer because mm -hmm. he takes a softer approach and I also think that he is a sage because he's he's very thorough in the way he approached he has a softer approach with the inspirer mm -hmm. At the same time, I believe from what I have seen and read is that he's well researched and, and educated. So he will tend to not just talk off the top of his head, he will be very knowledgeable in the research mm. that he's done, which is a sage before he speaks. And mm. that builds confidence in someone that has that leadership role. Mm. And, and for him then to step out into the limelight and do, you know, another archetype is luminary where they, you know, really happy to be in that limelight or, you know, or empress again, you know, happy to be, you know, speaking out in the big spotlight. Um, he will, because we have all eight patterns of power or eight communication styles within us, even if it's not our top archetypes, there is, we can tap into that aspect of ourselves in, and bring that through. So for Joe, coming back to him, he's naturally an inspirer. He's naturally a sage. And he, but his, he would step into his luminary to be in the spotlight in order to get his message out. That's, mm. that's my, my take on it. What, what would, yeah. Is that what you think? Or Yeah, I could see he was that. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, because you, you know, obviously looked into this a lot more. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of a famous female. Uh, is there any that come to mind for you that you've looked at? Oh, what about Michelle Obama? 
Yeah, she's great. She's, I mean, gosh. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She is amazing. And what I, I would love to do the the because I've with the profiling tool that I've developed, it's it's um it's not just about me going, oh yeah, you're a such and such. It's actually I've developed the profiling tool so people only takes about 10 minutes, as you know, um, to be able to identify what their top archetypes are and what order their archetypes are. So yes. I would love to do it with uh, with Michelle Obama and just to see what she comes through as. I I feel when I look at her, I feel that she is an empress. She mm. is uh, someone who, and I think, and I believe she's got that inspire in her as well. And she's also a, and I think she's got that connector in her as well because she's very good at, a bit like Oprah, you know, they're mm. very, very good where they'll speak to one person, but there's the inclusion of everyone. And that's mm. what a connector does. They, they speak to one, but that everyone's included. And it's a beautiful quality to have. Yes. Yes. Uh, but as as a as an empress, she's a thought leader. She what mm. her words are power. So when she goes on stage, whether it be her podcast or whether it be you know speaking on TV or wherever, she will her words, what she says, whatever she says, people will take on board because she's got such a it's a powerful presence mm. in a in a very in a lovely soft way. Yes. So she's not loud and 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 out there, but she's got that she's got the inspire qualities where her words are power. She steps on stage, she owns that space, and she speaks her truth. Yes. And uh, yeah, and that's that's what I feel is Michelle. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it, I guess um, you can learn to embody your uh, archetypes more, like how to bring them out more and understand both sides there are that those points that you know you can be down on yourself or, or so you know yeah. in in all the archetypes you know there's the positive and negative is that correct in, in looking at archetypes absolutely so there's the strength bring out the more where we thrive and then there's the the parts the parts that can hold us back the challenges that can come mm. up and and stop us so is that what you mean yeah yeah so I guess it's learning once you know them, you can build on those strengths more and understand those other parts of you. You've got to integrate that and be comfortable knowing that, that which is fine. Um, but yes, you can grow those tal talents or gifts or uh, who you are, I guess. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So for example, it's like a uh, an empress, for example, that's that's the first one that comes to mind. So you know we can talk about her, and uh, she she she's got this powerful presence. She'll step out on, or he or she, of course, uh, yes. will step out onto the stage, and and they they they'll say what they need to say, and everyone will be like, oh my goodness, and they'll be hooked onto on her words. What can happen with an empress is because they are really quick to pick up things, they're very fast to pick up uh, in the way that they work, they can be, they can get really frustrated. One of the challenges that comes up for them is they can get frustrated because people aren't keeping up. It's like, um, it's like you know, I've thought this through, I know where we're going, and a visionary is a little bit like this as well. Um, I've thought about where we're going and I know that this is true and like come on we're, let's go and and someone like an inspirer will feel that's whoa hang on um, <laughs> that's a bit fast for me um, I need to think about it. I need to process what you're saying I need to feel into you know whether this is right for me and take some time to mm. go within mm. uh, yes. and so they can come across intimidating because of their very mm. forthright in the, and very direct in the way that they talk. And, and this is what was actually interesting with this client I was speaking with this week was with her team. She said, well, you know, my team is, you know, I think she said, probably they've got used to my way. That's why they're all good. And I said, absolutely, they've got used to you. But for someone who doesn't know, which is why she was having some challenge around putting people offside because of that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, it is, but the thing, the good thing is that the challenges can be there once we have the awareness of what they can be. So mm. for an example, an inspirer can be, you know, um, they can forget to look after themselves. 
they forget to draw that line in their sand. They give so much of themselves to say to others that they forget that, you know, it's okay to say no. Mm. And they, you know, they can really um, exhaust themselves from it. So, but once we have that awareness of those things that can hold us back or, or you know, stop us, yes. then we can start to make a change and actually step into the other aspects or the other communication style or aspects of the other communication style and bring that through so for an example the inspirer because they you know find it a challenge to say no can step into the aspect of an empress for example who has no trouble at all saying no you know it's like and so you can step you can yeah. step into that aspect of yourself and go yes well, where is she where is that, where is he or she, that empress or emperor part of mm. me? Might be my solar plexus or my heart or, you know, my left hand or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. and just, like, you know, what colour is it? Well, what colour mm. is he or she? And, and you know, what, what is the message here? What would be, what would your empress do right now? And they'll say, okay, or what would my, my inspirer would like to get as a message from my empress? That kind of thing. So it's um, yeah. we can step into those aspects of ourselves. Mm. Yes, that's right. We do forget that we we have all those aspects, as you say, and they can get forgotten in some ways or just over, overcome, dominated by the other ones. But we have it all, and um, it's such mm -hmm. a great thing that you know to understand that to bring that to light more, so yeah. you can use them for yourself and and to help others. You know. I mean, really, when it comes down to communication is about relationships and relationship to everything and everyone. So it's such a fundamental thing. And, you know, communication obviously is so important for us all to create better, more harmony and happiness in this world in yes. whatever way that is for you in whatever area. It doesn't really matter what area. It's just everyday life. And changing you know for the better in in that way and clearer um and working with it's that it's more harmonious with your own energy has to create yeah. more harmony everywhere so yeah it's quite a an important thing and obviously with your speaker training this would be a fundamental thing to incorporate that to enhance the speaker training if you want to you know do the be a speaker of some sort um yeah. Yeah. quite important so they marry very well together in that way um they yeah, do, so, they do. I mean, and and it's so interesting it's if you're you know you're, you're absolutely right <laughs> because the once thing once someone knows who they are for example yourself you know with being a visionary inspirer and uh I always creator. forget that often. Creator. That's right. Creator. That's right. <laughs> creator. Yeah, that's right. Uh, with being those three, see, so you're with the Inspirer, their tendency is not to be on the big stage. They absolutely can do it if they choose to, of course. But it's like their, their natural thing is not to be on the big stage. Yet the visionary part of that is where a, you know, a visionary will actually thrive on the big stage. So when it comes to public speaking, like you're, you're talking about, a uh, their natural once you know blocks are cleared or you know confidence is built and they have the skill it's the natural thing they really own that and and you know as a, as a visionary they can step out onto the stage and do the public speaking arena whereas mm. someone who's perhaps a sage as their top archetype and and inspirer as their second and what would be a third maybe connector would might be their third uh, they're all they prefer the one-on-one -on -one conversations mm. being behind the scenes connector is okay because they go in networking but it's still one-to-one mm. -one, so it's still one-to-one -one conversations but a natural thing is to be behind the scenes mm. uh, so so when I'm working with someone, if they had that combination, you can see there's so many different combinations that oh, we can be. Yes. <laughs> um, when you, how many when would there be? Massive amount, wouldn't it? like you, I couldn't calculate how many. Exactly. Actually, I, I, that would be a really good exercise to do, wouldn't it? I'm not, <laughs> what I might do though is get a sage to do it because they would love that. 
Very good <laughs> point. <laughs> that's they a love very good point. Just doing the, yeah, that's it. But the thing is, they once I've worked with someone and we recognize, you know, they've, they've done the profiling tool and then we we have a conversation around what their top archetypes are. And if they're a sage and then an inspire and a connector, we say, okay, we have a conversation that's not me telling them, you know, well, you, you need to be doing this. We have a conversation so it, um, it brings it out, it draws it out from them as to what they feel congruent with. And, mm. and so, you know, for a sage, they might go, well, you know, it's the one-to-one -one is definitely what it is. And I'd rather be home with a good book with my, you know, watching TV, you know, rather than be out there talking to anyone, in fact. Yeah. So when we can explore, well, you know, you want to get your message out for your business. You want to be, you know, delivering that and, and, and become more confident in that way. Um, what would work for you? And we'll look at all the different avenues that they could take. Because the yeah. thing is, there's nothing stopping a sage being out on stage if they really feel that they want to do that. Mm. Um, and, and then with that, they can... It's, it's like they, because a sage can, can often forget that there's a human factor, that there's human beings involved. Yeah. They all this yeah. amazing, you know, they're the academics, they're the researchers, they're the educators. So they get out and they just lay out all these, these facts at people and they forget about the yeah. human. But once they actually embrace their communication and overcome any fears of being out, out there, you know, speaking to groups, they actually develop a beautiful humor and connection with their, because they're so knowledgeable, they have all of this. And then when they relax into themselves and step into some of the, you know, the aspects that like to be out on stage, what actually happens is it's quite fascinating watching is that they become quite funny and humorous because they allow themselves to just be in that natural space. Yeah. So rather than just talking at their audiences or yes. their, you know, whether the groups are small or big, talking at them, they actually become this engaging conversationalist and they have a beautiful time. It's, it's fascinating yes. to watch. Mm. What I, I sort of, for me, I understood because I think I spoke to you a bit beginning before I sort of knew I felt like there were these two parts that were fighting against each other, you know, one stopping the other. And yes. when you know I realized that one can support the other it doesn't have to be one or the other in it looking at it in that way and working out how to use it that that was a really great thing to think that one doesn't have to fight the other or stop the other or hinder the other or or whatever when they one's out there and one's not it, it's yeah it's learning how to use them that was really great as well it just like opens the door up so much more in mm. lots of ways yeah so mm, that exactly. definitely I could see what you were saying so yeah it's so many aha moments uh, I felt um when when I understood mine and and so forth and mm. I'm sure other people would um you know the more you understand yourself the more confidence more empowered you are and it, it's a grounding aspect I, I, it feels very like you're grounded more even in, more in your center I feel energetically as well so true so true and and it starts with knowing yourself because when you know yourself so well and you understand who you are as a communicator as a public speaker and what works and and where you feel aligned and where you don't then you can make choices around that which is which is which is where the transformation happens mm. and and then when you know yourself so well then you can start to know the other ones because the next level you know the first yes. level is like to know who you are as a communicator and where you're best you know getting your message out and and you know communicating public speaking whatever it is then the next level is getting to know and understand all of the other patterns of power the other eight ultimate communication archetypes or or the ones that you aren't and 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 then you get to know so that you can when you go to a networking event or when you're having a one-to-one -one conversation with a, maybe a potential client or maybe you're, um, you're speaking to a team or, or a colleague mm. or something, you can recognise instantly, ah, your top archetype must be one of the, you know, a connector, a creator. 
And then you can say, you then, because you know them so well and you know yourself so well, you can adapt your communication and you can adapt your style uh, because, you know, nonverbal communication is a big part of it as well. It's, it's mm. between 70 and 93% of communication. Yes, yes. And different style, different body language. So we can adapt to who we're speaking to and really uh, build that rapport just really Hold on, I hope we get Kim back. She's just frozen. Oh no. <laughs> Hopefully she'll be able to come back. Yes, that's come on. Well, yes, it's it's a fascinating subject. And I mean, I can attest that um, it really made a difference to how I felt about myself and what, and even a direction for what I wanted to do in life. I, I was on the path, but it can help open up even more. And that's, we're changing all the time. And it, obviously the times now have changed so much and we're all having to rethink and evaluate so many different things. And communication whoop, is such a part of that. So, um, we're always learning it and it never stops. And I'm sure Kim herself um, would be, um, would attest to that. Just sorry, I'm just seeing if she can get back in. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Kim uh, would have, has learned so much over the years, the part, and, and even before she did the archetypes. And um, well, hopefully, she, here she is back again. <laughs> we just can't hear you. Just need to unmute yourself. Yeah, all done. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping you get back in. <laughs> oh, yes. No, that was really funny. I was quickly going on my phone to do a hotspot, but then it reconnected. So I thought, yay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, communication gods who are looking after us right now. That you oh, totally, in. totally. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's modern technology for you, isn't it? You know, oh. it's, it, it's always mm, never sure. So adaptability, yes. Well, actually, which would be the most archetype that would be the most adaptable? Is there one? Is that such a thing? Would you say? The ones that are most adaptable would be the sage, if we're looking. I, I just don't oh. want to box them up. No, no, I understand sage, that. Uh, yeah, but the sage uh, tends to take things in their stride. Uh, they're about, let's find a solution. Okay, here's the problem. Let's find a solution. And, and the other ones that are very much like that, so they tend to stay very grounded, the sage. Mm -hmm. uh, the inspirers will, will also, because they're all about um, making it right, you know, helping and, and fixing. Mm -hmm. They're also very good as far as, you know, okay, let's, let's, how can I help you? How can I make this happen? Yeah. And, and the other one that comes to mind is, uh, is, is a visionary is very much around okay so because they're about let's create the future let's let's what where are the ideas now let's let's get mm. on with it um they're very good like okay again here's the problem where's our solution let's go forward so they would be the ones but um my first okay. my first thought was sage because they're very grounded very grounded mm. yeah yeah yes. so well, that, <laughs> that's good to know so if you need <laughs> if someone uh needs a project like you could actually um you know if you had a project you could do a quick archetype thing on everyone and see who has the best what gifts people have in different ways that could um work together and use their gifts accordingly i would think would be great totally totally because in fact and you've you brought up a really really important point to beth because when you know you're thinking about a team we need all of those aspects mm. we need all eight aspects of you know those patterns of power those strengths uh you know because that's how we you know if we're looking at a circle and different segments of a circle that makes the circle very um, even and balanced so that we can tap into the strengths of of others and to strengths of yes. another type in order to to get things done so it's about having all of them in there. So having around us, even if we're, um, you know, we're on our own, like we're, we're self-employed and it's only us in the business, but the people that we choose to have on our team external to us, 
you know, identify mm. what their communication archetype is, you know, whether it's mm. a virtual assistant or, or, or whoever, graphic designer, mm. identifying so you get that nice even pie to, to be able yes. to work the most efficiently and do the best. Mm. Yes, no, that's yeah. good. So, um, yeah, the, coming up, um, what's, obviously you're, you're doing your work, your um, communication training, uh, which is your speaker training, which is an ongoing thing, is the, are you incorporating the archetypes a, a lot into that or it's still a little bit separate? Well, it's not separate. But, no, um, no, it's, it's like the, oh, sorry, I jumped in this, it's because I'm a busy <laughs> Yeah, it's like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> but it is true it, it's like it's a starting point because uh, it's it's um you know one thing I have learned is that I, oh, I haven't met one person who doesn't want to know something more about themselves you know yeah. we, we see marketing archetypes and we see personality types and we see branding types and and communication types is another one that People like tell me more about myself. Who am I? And yes. and love it. I love it. I I do too. I love it. It's like yeah. oh, oh, you know, and and uh, and it's it's fabulous because we learn that little bit more. So it's actually the starting off point where someone can actually find out who they are, what their top archetypes are, and then you know we have a conversation from there, which then mm -hmm. opens the doors as far as what do you need if, if they choose to go that way so yes oh, that's good I'll, I'll put um your website i'll read out your website here it's um ultimatecommunicator.com.au if you'd like to contact kim and i'll put this underneath the post on the angel heart radio page as well um mm -hmm. so people if they're interested can have a conversation with you I, you won't regret it i know it's um yeah it's really fascinating so is there anything, I mean, you, you're doing so much, is there anything, any new projects coming up that, you know, or new <laughs> directions? I mean, you've already done one new direction. Is there anything else that you've decided to incorporate as well? Is there any, or you're just <laughs> mainly focusing on these at this point? Well, I'm so glad you asked that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, no, I'm, I'm seriously. No, seriously, this is quite funny because I hadn't even thought about this until you brought it up. I'm actually writing a book. Ah. So yes, so this is the next one, and it's because of having you know identifying the, the communication archetypes last year, it's it's like it'll be a beautiful um, opportunity for people to be able to read about them, and and the idea is oh. that they can read about the archetypes in relation to you know different stories in there. Um, so I want it to be a, a book that they can just take anywhere with them mm. and, and really find useful and at the same time it gives them the opportunity to find out who they are as uh, in their top archetypes so that's what I'm doing at the moment is, ah. is measuring, uh, <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> I must have just tuned in because I, I didn't hey, that. have that thought before <laughs> yeah isn't that interesting because I it don't is. think I mentioned it to you did I no you didn't no no so oh, that's cool. great. That's fantastic because that will be such a wonderful guide just to have that you can pick up anytime <laughs> and go, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, just yeah. to understand it. And um, seeing something written is just anchors something in a lot more than just even talking about it sometimes to see it written it and going over it. It's, it's yeah. a wonderful thing in written form. Not Computers are great, but to have a book is wonderful. Yeah. Definitely. To have a book. Exactly. And, you know, I'd love to, uh, because, you know, I do a lot of group trainings as well as online uh, webinars mm. and also one-to-one. -one. And one of my, one of the intentions that I have is to get out into the regional areas and, mm. and to actually be able to help people out there as well. And to have a book to be able to you know that they can mm. have, that you know they can refer to and reference, and of course contact me if they if they have questions, and and uh, we'll be yeah that's that's the one of the next exciting projects. Oh, that's that's yeah. very exciting. So, when would you see that may come out? Well, my my intention <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is to is for the next ninety days is to have it completed. And, and then to get it um, out there to the next level of getting it published and uh, a couple of ideas of, of who I'll do that through. So, yeah. That so very is great. 
Ah, that that will be really good, Kim. That'll be wonderful. And um, yeah, so you you know you you've done a lot of webinars and and working with people over the years. So you're mm. still doing group um, and one on one on one is is quite intense and all the homework, which is really good, but it makes you uh, really remove any blocks if you were um, if you were resistant to things uh, or maybe looking at certain things. And um, yes, I can attest to Kim, you know, you do your homework and it's great because you get so much out of it. Well, yeah. I did, and I know a lot of other people have um, yeah. here. So, um, so there will there be a book, you, you're doing the archetype book, are you thinking uh, along the ultimate communicator um, as well? Just your speaker training? Is there a book in the line? Oh, yes, there is. And and this will be, I actually envision that there's going to be five books, definitely three, but I, I, I keep getting a sense that it's five. And, and I like that because communication, there was like a, a keynote, a, a talk that I did for a, a, the Key Business Network group recently, and uh, last week, in fact, and it was, it's really interesting because it's, uh, why am I sharing that? It's this, you know, I was talking with them because because um, the coordinator had asked me, can you do something on speaking and presenting? And I'm going, okay, so that's a really big subject what in 20 minutes, half an hour, what is it specifically that would be really valuable for your members? And, and she said, oh, storytelling. And I went, fine, mm. that's great. Because when you look at all the different aspects, and this is why I know there will be, you know, at least three books, because public speaking is such a big part, because there is storytelling for business, for professionals, there's the nest networking aspect, there's how do I put my talks together, how do I deliver them? And then you know, understanding in my style, because there's all those different avenues of communication and the ways that we can get our message out. And and so, yes, so that's yeah, it. going Fantastic. to be quite a range. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Just uh, one thing also, for yourself, <clears throat> I don't know, this could be a big answer, but <laughs> what, have you, what have you gained? What have you gotten out of this for yourself? I know, you, you know, you help so many other people. What is... What has it given you in your life? I, I, for me, and I, and I love that question because it's, uh, for me, it's given me a sense of who I am, mm -hmm. it, of who I truly am. And, and I know that there's even more for all of us, of course. And but from, to answer your question, I feel like, this is like the stepping stone to something else to be able to create more good. And I've always been around, you know, it's about helping others, being inspired. It's like, how can I help you? And, yeah. and for me, it's been, yeah, just, just finding, discovering myself, discovering mm. who I am and going, oh my gosh, you know, I can do it. And, and I think that's the big thing because, um, you know, for, for a lot of people, and this is me included, that imposter syndrome can show up. It can come mm. up, and it can really, you know, try to undermine the belief yes. systems and you know the, the self belief, the self esteem, the self confidence. And and when we take the action to do something, which is what I feel has happened, it's like I went, yes, I've got an inkling that this is where I want to go, and I've actioned it, and that has given me that that closer sense of self of what else. Mm. What else you know what else is possible yes. and yes. Uh, that's what i would recommend for everyone is do it <laughs> they yeah. say what is it nike just do it there's this there's, there's yes. truth in that. <laughs> it's true yeah. And, yeah. and i guess that's that would give you a far more greater sense of peace within yourself and um acceptance i guess about lots of things in life right totally yeah. yes yeah. totally because and, and self-acceptance is such a big one. You know, when we're, you know, as you know, it's when we grow up, we've, we've, we've got the different things that happen in our life that form who we are, which isn't true, but it's what yes. we believe to be true. And, and when we take ourselves on that path, wherever we're drawn to go and we follow that path, then it is, is that beautiful gift that we can give ourselves of 
self-acceptance and forgiveness and yeah love you know it's, it's yeah. just so beautiful and, and I'm not saying I've got it all sorted because I haven't <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> but it's it's uh yes it's it's just one step at a time and mm. uh, and that's what that's what I love mm. Mm. yeah yes and when you can come to that place it creates a clarity of um, and allows more to come <clears throat> excuse me more to come in it allows more to come in you're absolutely right you know I'm thinking of of one client who uh, she won the Sunshine Coast Businesswoman of the Year award and, and she is good for me to share this but she um, running you know, seven shine beauty salons she's just brilliant at what she does you know she's running this very very successful business and, and she came to me with a tremendous fear of public speaking. This was before I was doing anything with the communication archetypes. And, and she had a tremendous fear of public speaking, but she actually transformed. And, and she went on to absolutely love public speaking. And that's, those were her words. Wow. And, and she went, and she took it, she went across to, so she not only loves public speaking and that transformation happened for her. Um, she went across to France and she has this, uh, she became the licensee and ambassador for Australia for this elite skincare range, Gemology, which I've got to go, oh, my goodness, they put diamonds in their skincare range. It's just, like, amazing. <laughs> anyway, but that's digressing. But the thing is, she came back <laughs> and <laughs> she's talking to this, you know, she's talking to the, the organisation over the Gemology and they just absolutely loved her. And she's come back um, as being ambassador and licensee for Australia. And, and that's, you know, that's the kind of exciting things that can happen. When... No, come back, Kim. <laughs> We've just lost you right before the end. Hopefully she can come back in again. We've just frozen. Um, no, it's not, it doesn't seem to uh, happen. We'll see. So, folks, yes, it's been a great, um, great interview, and I hope you've really enjoyed today. Um, Kim is such a wonderful speaker and a wonderful person, and so much to offer and what you can get out of life. So, I would again recommend this if you're able to, but um, it certainly made a difference to me, and I know it would uh, make a difference to you as well. So, We'll oh, wait one minute. She might be back in just to end off. We'll see how she goes. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to speaking by myself too much. As you can say, my inspirer likes to be quiet. And so I have to get my communicator out there a lot more than I ever have before. And this is certainly an avenue for me that's um, changed my life as well. So definitely, if I can do it, someone who didn't want to speak, who was so shy of speaking in public or in, in a group or whatever, if, if I can do it, then certainly you can do it and you can be inspired in whatever way, whatever level of communication you're capable, we all are. It's just removing some of those, those inhibitions, those restrictions we put on ourselves and believe that they're true, but they're not. So I'll leave you thinking about that. And thank you for joining us today. I've had a great time. I hope you have too. And I'll see you next fortnight, which will be the 29th. Um, I'll have a special guest. Um, it, it'll be a pre-recorded session as uh, my guest is just in a time zone that it's too hard to do a live stream. Uh, Sandra Gelinas will be talking about Akashic Records, so it will be really interesting. So thank you again, and um, have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye.